It's been a while since I made a video in this series, and by that I mean one talking about normal tanks that should be added, not dumb tanks that should be or anything like that. Usually there's a theme to it, like World War II vehicles or vehicles from minor nations, but not so much this time. I have been thinking about Israeli vehicles recently, so there is a slight tilt in that direction, but I wouldn't really call it a theme. But before we get into it, I want to talk about my sponsor. I am partnered with Apex Gaming. They make pre-built PCs. If you're looking to upgrade, you should check them out. Link is in the description and comments. You can use my username as a discount code on checkout. Now back to the video. When looking at the Israeli tech tree, you might have noticed something. It doesn't have a ton of light tanks. In fact, it pretty much only has the AMX-13. This isn't really a failure on Gaijin's part, as Israel's never big on light tanks in reality. They did try to make this sort of mini Merkava thing, but there's practically no info on it. But going back to the AMX-13, they did try to modernize it, not really for themselves, but as an export item. The package was developed by the company Nimda, and was fairly extensive. The engine was upgraded to the 6V53T, the same engine used by the M551 Sheridan. Large improvements were made to the fire control systems as well, but the biggest change was to the tank's armament. Many options were available, with 60mm, 90mm, and 105mm cannons being offered. We're going to be focusing on the 60mm version, because that one was certainly built. I know the 60mm kinda sucks in War Thunder, but I think it could still be fun. It likely has a pretty decent autoloader, and the other improvements to the vehicle would likely make it pretty decent. Even if it turned out not to be an amazing tank, it would still provide more options for lineups. Next is another Israeli tank. When making the Israeli tech tree, Gaijin seemed to skip a lot of good low tier options. One such vehicle is the Deg M Yud. You might be thinking it looks like a kind of stunted Sherman, and that's exactly what it is. The Deg M Yud was an M50 Sherman that had its whole height reduced. This was made possible by the new Cummins engine, which moved the drive shaft to a position lower in the hull. This allowed the turret to be shifted downward, reducing the M50's tall profile. As far as how this would affect gameplay, it would make it a little bit harder to hit, and would probably make it a little bit more mobile too, and given that a decent amount of weight was likely shaved off. Personally speaking, I would probably put it in the tech tree, and folder it with the regular M50, but knowing Gaijin, they would probably make it an event vehicle or something like that. Now that the Israel section of the video is over, let's move on to a French vehicle, the VAB with 40mm CTA. If you've been following me for a while, then you know I have a slight obsession with CTA guns, guns that use case telescoped ammunition. These are more or less conventional rounds, but the projectile is totally embedded in the case. This might not seem very significant, but it allows you to do some very cool things, like create cans that use push-through breach mechanisms. This is a very quick and reliable way of reloading ammunition, and it's something France has become very interested in. One of their more successful endeavors is the 40mm gun built by CTA International. It's primarily known for being mounted on the Jaguar, and while I think the Jaguar is an incredibly cool vehicle, it does have MMP missiles, which presents a problem. The MMP is France's answer to the Spike missile, and it has very similar capabilities. This obviously wouldn't be great for gameplay, so I'm suggesting that this vehicle should be added instead. It's basically just a VAB with a gun, no missiles or anything. It can be thought of as a wheeled STRF though the fire rate is a bit different. It's more akin to the Bushmaster than the Bofors. Still, it would likely be a pretty potent vehicle. And finally, let's round things off with the American Bradley Seavast. I have talked about this vehicle before, but to be honest, I just think it's really cool. So I'm going to talk about it again. Seavast was an experiment that sought to increase the Bradley IFE's lethality. To do this, a 35mm cannon was mounted in a cleft turret. A new non-folding tow missile launcher was also included. While the new launcher is probably what War Thunder players will be most thankful for, and given that the Bradley's biggest flaw is how long the missiles take to deploy, I think the gun is far more interesting. The gun, built by Ares Incorporated, yes that Ares, was the 35mm Talon gun. It was very similar to the gun used by the Gepard, but it also had APFS DS rounds. Although the prototype worked well, the vehicle was not adopted. In War Thunder, I think it'd make for a good top tier IFV. It wouldn't have optics or armor quite as good as the M3A3, but I think the massive upgrade in armament makes up for it. It would be a good counterpart to the BMP-2M, assuming the 2M ever goes up to a proper BR. Anyway, that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.